What are you all doing here? Good afternoon, baby seals. This is Sam Vaknin, author of Malignant Self-Love, Narcissism Revisited, and a professor of psychology in the Center for International Advanced Professional Studies, the outreach program of the CIAS Consortium of University. Z, <laughs> universities. Satisfied? Then we can move forward into the topic of today's video, which is essentially intermittent reinforcement. Now, we tend to think of intermittent reinforcement in a very stereotypical way, but actually, many behaviors, many decisions, many choices have to do with intermittent reinforcement. Intermittent reinforcement is a very all pervasive phenomenon in a multiplicity of relationships, not all of them abusive, dysfunctional, and pathological. But let's start with the definition. Of course, because I'm an academic, and academics define before they discuss. What is intermittent reinforcement? Intermittent reinforcement involves two people at least, but not necessarily only two. You can have intermittent reinforcement on a collective level. The government can engage in intermittent reinforcement. Social media companies do it all the time. Intermittent reinforcement is when a receiving party, aka victim in intimate relationships, <laughs> a receiving party receives regular, regular signals messages and treatment which are cruel, callous, abusive, disempathic, indifferent, and so on. I repeat, when there is a receiving party, a recipient, who is subject to behaviors or treatments, treatment or decisions or choices which on the surface appear to be sadistic, cruel, callous, abusive, disempathic, etc., etc. And then, every once in a while, there's a display of extreme affection. Interspersed with the abuse, there are instances of reward. This is very unsettling. It's discombobulating. Look it up. When you are subjected to an endless stream of abuse, you know what to expect. You know the rules of the game. You know all the ropes. You prepare yourself mentally and physically. But what do you do when abuse is then gives place to love? Love succumbs to pain. Pain follows affection. Affection results in hurt. What do you do when the signaling is inconsistent? What do you do when you keep receiving mixed signals, information that information bits that contravene each other? What do you do when your data don't fit in? Neat frameworks. How do you interpret the world? How do you make sense of anything and everything that's happening? What's the meaning of such behavior? Hot and cold. A behavior that at one time tells you you're nothing, you're an object, you are filth, you're unworthy, you're bad, you're corrupt, you're stupid, you're inadequate, a bad object signaling. And then suddenly, it gives place to the most warm, empathic, understanding, accepting succor. How do you reconcile these two streams of messages? The answer is you don't, and it gives rise to traumatic bonding. But <coughs> intermittent reinforcement is often described in the literature in a very one-dimensional, caricaturistic way. Intermittent reinforcement is much more deep, 
complex and pervasive than we imagine, let us examine two phenomena. False hope, false hope, giving someone false hope and then withdrawing this hope and then giving hope again. That's a form of intermittent reinforcement. Anytime you give anyone a reason to hope, a reason to get up in the morning, a raison d'etre, a reason to exist, and then you take it away, you are engaging, however unwittingly, in intermittent reinforcement. Another phenomenon which many of you may be acquainted with from my videos is approach avoidance repetition compulsion. Repetition compulsions in general, but especially approach avoidance, they are forms of intermittent reinforcement. The borderline uh, personality frequently engages in this. People with borderline personality disorder frequently ap approach and then avoid because they are subject to the twin anxieties, engulfment anxiety versus abandonment anxiety. They approach in order to allay, to mitigate abandonment anxiety, and then they avoid in order to calm down and ameliorate the engulfment anxiety. This approach, avoidance, I hate you, don't leave me, I love you, I want you dead. <laughs> These messages, conflicting messages from borderlines, they are forms of intermittent reinforcement. Indeed, many partners of borderlines and partners of even codependents describe the relationship is a kind of trauma and the bonding is especially intense because the person who causes you pain is the only person who can take it away. The person who has locked you into a position of hurt and agony and uncertainty and indeterminacy and fear and stress, the person who locked you into this is the only one who's holding the key to release you from it. Intermittent reinforcement is, a, is an attribution error. You tend to think that only the person who had mistreated you can make it all go away with a kiss. And so there are four types of intermittent reinforcement. Fixed interval schedule, FI, very common in relationships. The abuser awards the victim the reinforcement Reinforcement is simply a behavior or a message which alters or modifies your behavior. When you're subject to reinforcement, which is positive, you're likely to repeat the behavior that elicited the positive reinforcement more. And when you're subject to a negative reinforcement, it's likely to inhibit the behavior that had produced it or had led to it. So the abuser awards the victim a reinforcement. Think of it as a cookie or a candy. So he awards reinforcement after a specific interval, a specific period from the last reinforcement. And usually it's a fixed interval. This is also known as partial intermittent reinforcement. So every two weeks on the dot, according to schedule, there is a tradition of positive reinforcement following two weeks of harrowing harassment and punitive actions and fear and pain inflicted on the victim. The victim then learns to survive these two weeks in order to reach the final point where she is awarded with something, a candy. The abuser waits for a specific time to offer for example, affection or understanding or attention or a listening ear or a shoulder to cry on. And this causes the victim to display slower reactions after the reinforcement behavior. In the presence of this kind of reinforcement, the victim becomes inured, more tolerant, inured to the abuse as the time passes. He develops, the victim develops abuse tolerance the same way alcoholics develop alcohol tolerance. This is the fixed interval schedule intermittent reinforcement. There's another type known as variable interval schedule intermittent reinforcement. The reinforcement reward, the gift, the candy, 
the soothing come after a time that is unpredictable, a time that is variable from the previous time that had elapsed. The victim receives the reinforcement by surprise. It's abrupt, it's sudden, it's not scheduled, and therefore it is much stronger, much more potent. Such cases increase the anticipation of the reward and the affection. The victim becomes addicted to the reinforcement. The victim tolerates abuse of any kind from their partner in order to get this spontaneous spontaneous relief because intermittent reinforcement is about building up your anxiety your stress your fear and then relieving it with a kind word with a touch with a smile it's cruel there's nothing more cruel than intermittent reinforcement except possibly listening to my videos and then there's the fixed ratio fixed ratio schedule intermittent reinforcement. In fixed ratio schedule intermittent reinforcement, the abuser delivers an affectionate display after several responses. The abuser is actually focused on the victim's response. He wants to get a rise out of the victim. He wants to elicit the kind of reaction in the victim that is discernible and visible. So, the victim continues to produce higher and higher rates of responsiveness until they get their reward. Clinically speaking, this is Pavlovian conditioning. Pain is inflicted and it gets attached in the victim's mind to an ultimate reward. So the victim learns to actually anticipate the pain, want the pain, crave the pain in order to finally benefit from joyfully the offered reward behavior pauses and the victim continues the same pattern after the following abuse incident and finally there's the variable ratio schedule um, intermittent reinforcement the reinforcement is awarded after a variable number of responses in the variable ratio schedule intermittent reinforcement Remember that the previous variation, the previous variation, the fixed ratio schedule intermittent reinforcement is when the abuser provides a reward after a fixed number of responses, let's say five. The victim has to respond five times, for example, by crying or begging or supplicating or self-harming. And then the abuser provides the reward. And again, the reward could be a smile, could be a kind word, could be a tiny gift or a big gift, but there's always a reward. And in the fixed ratio schedule, this has to do with a fixed number of responses. Naturally, in the variable ratio schedule, the reinforcement, the reward, the award come after a variable number of responses. Once the abuser would comfort you and soothe you and hold you and love you and lick away your tears after three times of crying, after three events of crying. And then next time he would do it after two, after seven lacrimose incidents. There's no predictability. There's no way to tell. There's no way to prepare yourself. The abuser offers affection faster or delays the affection at his or her sole discretion. And this in turn causes the victim to display a high and steady, steady rate or response upon receiving the reinforcement. All these have devastating consequences on the body, hormonally and otherwise. Ultimately, these behaviors wear down the victim. The victim becomes kind of zombified and much more amenable to manipulation, which is precisely the idea behind intermittent reinforcement. Trauma bonding is about control. Watch my interview about trauma bonding on this channel. Thank you for listening. I hope I haven't traumatized you too much. And here's my smile to soothe you and comfort you down. 
Yes, yes, I know. Sorry about that. See you next time.